message. Uh, hello? I can't, I can't hear you, but you can hear me, right? We interrupt to bring you this. We've hijacked your daily dose of regurgitated news to bring you Navigating the Truth. Brace yourself, listeners, as you're about to enter a world where the narrative is no longer masqueraded as the truth. A world where the conspiracies of yesterday's translate into the truths of today. Are you listening? The veils covering the truth are lifting and understandings once suppressed are finally being revealed. Will you be ready? And now, your host and navigator through these circles of lies, the host of Navigating the Truth, Caroline Bell Tumblety. Hi, welcome to Navigating the Truth. It is Sunday. It is October 29th, so this is the last Sunday in October. We are going into Halloween, Sam Hain, on Tuesday. It actually kind of feels that way all weekend. It like um, my daughter actually had a Halloween party last night and she dressed up as um, Ace Ventura and they had a blast. And I think um, her boyfriend was Shaun of the Dead. So, and somebody else, I, what was she? She was, uh, what do they call them? It's the Star Wars, but it's the one who wears the, is it a scythe? I can't remember. Anyway. She was dressed as that, but they had a, they had a fantastic time. We also had um, fallback. Um, clocks went back one hour, so it is light outside. It is the sun is just actually setting right now, so we will we gained a little daylight in the evening, which is good. <clears throat> uh, I was, I'm no, I'm not really looking forward to um the dark nights of winter. Like it gets um pretty dark yet. It's good if the sky's clear, like and you can get a good view of the sky at night then that's really good. But I'd like to welcome the listeners um, who chose to listen in. Thank you so much. And um, I have a website. It is soulayam.org or .net. I have a YouTube channel, Caroline Bell Tumblety. And I have Facebook, also Caroline Bell Tumblety. I'm, I'm putting together a tour, but I'm, I'm actually very quiet about I'm I'm not actually kind of sharing it publicly and I have about um, four people who are interested so it's actually you you have to get in touch with me like you can do it through the website um, you can do it through the email or you can do it through messenger on Facebook I did check that a couple of times a week but I won't be sharing stuff um, openly until everything is in place so that's just where I'm at with that and today I have the, a very very awesome guest i have the lovely madeline rudy from life and the hologram she co-hosts with merlin the wizard and let me read you um madeline's bio here madeline rudy rudy um life in the hologram is just one of the many shows madeline has hosted since joining the global world of radio in 2007 her cosmic adventure began in the in Sedona, Arizona, known for its magical and mystical energy. She has over 30 years working as a student of the spiritual, metaphysical, as well as New Age. This expanded understanding gives her a global appeal, not just to world-renowned guests, but her listeners that follow her show, Life in the Hologram as well as her social media outlets worldwide. Madeline took a leap of faith and vacated the corporate world, embarking upon a second career in alternative healing. As a spa owner, she gained years years of knowledge in alternative healing while working out of the hotel industry as an ethicistician and a massage therapist. As if her resume wasn't enticing enough, she is also a hypnotist, Reiki master and inter- Christ channeling teacher, well point hypnosis practitioner, as well as fluent working with tuning forks and light tools. Searching for more and on a quest for her true mission in life, she closed her spa in Pennsylvania and embarked on a magical journey, traveling from Florida to Arizona, then to Georgia, until finally returning to the place she calls home, Pennsylvania. During that time, she had the great pleasure of traveling throughout the U.S., With Dr. Valerie, the wealth of knowledge she gained while working the quantum vortex experience has been priceless in her own pursuit for awareness within the hologram. Madeline's days are now filled with esoteric studies and communication with like-minded souls. Welcome, Madeline Rudy. Welcome to Navigating the Truth. Oh, thank you for having me. 
it's a pleasure. <laughs> it really is. I love uh, chatting with you. We were chat. We were actually together last night as well. Yeah. Yeah, on um, Solaris's Raven Stars Witching Hour. And David, yeah. David Cook was there as well. That was, yeah, that was a fun show. Yeah, we always have fun. We do, we do. In the wee hours. Well, yours is in the morning and mine's in the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I almost um, I almost messed it up. So I did last night. Like, I had um, set my alarm and I, I literally turned on my computer and I had, like, three minutes till the show. <laughs> and I was like, uh oh, like I had completely missed the um, missed the alarm. Like I put the alarm ah. at four, and I should have had it at three. So yeah. Anyways, it all worked out, and I made it in time. Yeah, I know. Oh, don't we always get so nervous of things not working out, and then they work out anyway? <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> like I get myself into such a state at times, like like trying to get something if I feel like I have a deadline or, mm-hmm. and I, I can make myself like it, it. It's I think it's lessened the older I have got. Like I I I kind of prioritize a little differently now, which it kind of helps my nerves. <laughs> you know, whereas before, yeah. like yeah, I'd get myself wound up. Things wouldn't work. You know, like things would break. Usually, right as you're ready to go live. You know, that's mm-hmm. what's been happening quite a bit with um, Solaris' shows. Well, look at last night. I, my computer yeah. was fine and I was ready. And then the the uh, everything froze up. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, I'll just do it on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least we, you had another option. You mm-hmm. know, at least that you did. Like, like uh, you know, I do like technology like i do like some of it i I really really do and i think there is like um a lot of good could be done with it that's for sure but um i'm a little i don't know i'm i'm not on the fence i'm actually my mind's pretty clear i don't like um a lot of what is going on right now it makes me um makes me very disappointed for one thing that what the world <laughs> oh well yeah Who, whoever thought i mean right? I just, if i said it once i said it a thousand times now i never thought i would say to be longing for the good old days <laughs> right i know I know, I know. But that's the way it is, you know. I think that's the way this place has always been. I'm pretty sure, like, when my dad was talking about the old days, it was better for him, you know. Mm -hmm. And because I watched him, I watched him as he grew older. He was less able to communicate because the changing times and the way that, um, like, I used to argue with him about music. Like, I remember going through his records and I came across the Eva Destruction. And who was that? Barry Maguire, I think it was. Barry Maguire, Eva Destruction. And I, I played that record until the grooves were gone and he he gave me a big lecture about it saying that I didn't understand what it was about it was basically about the state of the world mm-hmm. but that would have been what that record came out in the 60s that record you could be playing at the day and mm-hmm. it, you know it's as, as, as truthful now as it was back then in the 60s and I think it was the Vietnam War that they were mm-hmm. like and we were just talking like before we came live like we are in world war three whether people they realize don't recognize that. it no they don't recognize no, it no they don't and we are it's, it's really apparent the thing I, the thing that i have is i've always thought that this whole idea that one part of the world can be at war and the other part of the world. see if you look at it like a ship you can't sink half a ship the whole thing goes down like it's impossible to just take it like half and that seems to be you know it's it's well orchestrated because now what you have is protesters and pride at the same time and they start fighting with each other and it's just absolutely insane it's like Smoke and mirrors. Everything is smoke and mirrors. Oh, hasn't it always been like that, though? I mean, yeah, yeah. But now it's it's just more evident because of social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
you know, even in the Vietnam War, you could watch a little bit of it on TV, but <laughs> now you could almost watch and fire, you know, when the first bomb was fired. Yeah. yeah I also wondered about that. I wondered about that as well, though. I wondered about the accuracy of some of the images that we get. Right. You know, but that just comes from mistrusting, like, which is normal because they haven't been truthful in the past. Right. And they have, you know, these countries in uh, the Middle East, they've been fighting for eons. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, you would think that after people fight for this long, it's like, why are we doing this? Why are we killing each other? What's the point? I don't I don't see a point in it. No. I mean, you know, and they talk about land. Who who really owns the land? I mean, look, they're going they're going to the Mars, they're going to, to the moon, and people are claiming land there. That's not theirs. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Same with the water, you know, same with nature. N- none of it. Like it- the the claim of ownership is like right. I mean this this planet I mean look at the earthquakes look at look at just the natural disasters without looking at any of the other stuff well the There's, way they orchestrate the weather I mean why yeah. why drop a bomb when you can have an earthquake mm-hmm. yeah do you yeah. know what I mean oh yeah I know what you mean yeah why drop a bomb when you can have an earthquake create a tornado, create a hurricane when her, where hurricanes don't come. Do you know, look, they can do anything. It's like, yeah. why are you doing this? Well, they blame the people that we have, um, we are responsible for climate change because they call it climate change. It's so wow. st- stupid, you know, yeah. and, and people are just desperate for like, not to be worrying, not to be fearful. Like they just want their lives to go back to normal. You know, they just want um some kind of normalcy. But there isn't any. You know, there really isn't any. Like you're you're gearing up um the last shreds of your freedom are actually being shredded away right now. Did we ever have freedom? No, we had the illusion, Madeline. We did. Right. <laughs> The we illusion did. of. <laughs> yeah, we did. We had the. Not because, unless we step no. out of the matrix it's, and become, you know, the lawful citizen mm-hmm. or not. It's not the lawful person, not citizen. You have to use the right words here. <laughs> you know, I did that. Like, I have my name on that. Like, the there's a register here. Mm-hmm. It was the common law book. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I remember going through it and going through all the steps. And, yeah, I put my name on it. But. I don't know, you know, like they tell you what to do, like if if you're um, arrested, what to say, because they mm-hmm. don't have any jurisdiction mm-hmm. area. You know, I like these things because it's like um, gain power back to the people. Absolutely. But, it, but we are isolated. A lot of us are very mm-hmm. isolated for each other, which is another deliberate thing. Like so. And also, like, we don't really subscribe to violence. You know, it's like... Mm-mm. Protection, defending, absolutely. You come at me, I'm going to defend myself, absolutely. But the that is not our, our um. I don't believe that's our nature. It's not in my nature, like for violence first. Like I would mm. much rather be able to talk about our differences. You know, like as you say, like these countries, they have they there's a hatred between them. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they really do want to kill each other and. The thing is, I have seen that. It's it's like a contagion. And I have seen it, and I know it's going to sound wild, but I have seen it at, like, soccer games, football. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they're, yeah. They're, they're all the same color, you know? And, they're not, not, and it's not, they were fighting at my little great-grandson. He's six. Wow. The people were fighting at his football game. Come oh, on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's just little kids having fun. Yeah. It's not like it's the NFL in the playoffs, for God's sake. Yeah, but it's no even a reason, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a reason. Heck, like, they just got out of diapers a couple of years ago. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And it still plays with a little stuffy. Come on, are you going to fight a body in a in a Little kids football game? What's wrong with you people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what's right with them? You know, like, nothing. Not, 
but it's like so easily like a song like will rally them at soccer like it all it gets and it, they're shouting back and forth you know one team is on the other side the other, and it's just and they used to think it was because they had alcohol at these games and I, I do believe that that had a big impact on it because especially in this country they don't drink just to kind of feel good they drink to get drunk Mm -hmm. and and a lot of occasions they want to get falling down drunk Mm -hmm. so yeah and that's (laughs) (laughs) you know they're going all the way and it it seems they took away the alcohol in the soccer games but you still got it you know it 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 still happens, you know, it still happens, especially when we have like big games here, like um, Celtic and Rangers, which is like the big kind of football clubs here. And one represents Catholics and the other one represents Protestants. Have you ever heard the anything oh, so sake. messed up in all your life? It's like, it's so messed up. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't know why people have to choose sides with everything. Um, we lose. The minute we choose a side, we lose. You can't choose a side. And like I said, with these little kids, I mean, they have the little kids are cheerleaders now. They're only like five. And they have these little kids running around the football field. And they're five and six. It's like, come on. Wow. Is that like Little League? I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think sports are great, you know, like a day. Yeah. These extremes are not great. These are, this is bad behavior, you know. This is, this is, I don't know. I expect me. The kids worn out till they're 15. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And also, like, they make a lot of money, like these soccer players these um oh yeah the professional they, ones oh yeah they make a lot of money and you then they become role models they become role models for the younger and I, I don't think they should be you know some of them yes but for the most part no right up there with the actors and actresses and well don't you think that uh like with the younger generation most of them are aspiring to be either like a rock star or Oh, or they're going to play in the NFL or whatever the, you know, basketball, football, soccer, whatever. And they're all aspiring to do this. And it's like, why don't you ins- aspire to be a mathematician? Yeah. Or the greatest scientist <laughs> ever. You know, come on. Yeah, I know. But it's the culture. It's a whole like system, like media, music. It's all clothing you know it's yeah, all yeah 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 it's all it's all kind of interconnected like it's so and, bizarre and what happens you know when they go out and they try and look at all these shows they have the voice uh american uh america's got talent mm-hmm. uh, american's idol and then they go there and a lot of them get so disappointed because they didn't make it i know i know other dreams are smashed yeah Yep. And so, it's like, why didn't you just pursue something else? I know. How many singers can there be? How many football players can there be? How many soccer players can there be? There's mm-hmm. other things to be done. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, they're, they're growing up in a, in a society that you know, math is lame. You know, these things are lame. Yeah. Think. And it's... It's so arse backwards, you know, it's like, it's, they don't, there's no even any skills being taught. No. Like, um, like basic, like sewing, right. cooking, cooking, you know, some woodworking, you know, right. like there, none of it is being shared, nothing, none of it. No, and, and uh, I think you need to know how to balance a checkbook. You ought to know how to cook. Yeah. And you, you should really know how to take care of yourself by the time you're 17 or 18, mm-hmm. because uh, that's what you need to do. Or do they? Because a lot of the parents come in and rescue them all. Mm-hmm. Well, busy throwing money at them, you know, like, which is not really helpful like they they did studies like i think the brain isn't even fully completed its development until like 25 i mean 18 is even young but if they're not getting the foundation it doesn't really matter what age they are i was either reading an article or watching something where these people got hit in the head Mm -hmm. and it triggered a part of their brain where this guy turned into this you know amazing mathematician 
Oh, wow. <laughs> and somebody else turned into something else. It's like, <laughs> I was thinking, maybe if I whack my head against the wall, <laughs> uh, so something exciting will happen. <laughs> You know, maybe we should do that, like uh, <laughs> like a sandwich board and have a little walking stick and get them in, like, okay, I'm going to charge you 20 bucks and I'm going to knock you on the head and make you a genius. <laughs> Roll up. I look, I'd whack myself in the head, get a brain on your wrist and die. <laughs> oh, no, that's horrible. Don't say that. God's <laughs> sake. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But yeah. I also wonder about the food, like the nutrients, the vitamins, like for proper brain development. Like, how long has this been going on? You know, that the access to decent food, you know, that that's also been a problem. Well, I for- think decent food has gone out the window. Like, yeah, I think it started in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, TV dinners. Um, well, here, like the big thing here was um, getting the women into the workforce. Oh, and you, just like that, we are coming up on a break. So hang on to your seats, listeners. We will be back in three minutes. You're listening to Navigating the Truth with Caroline Bell Templeton, where the truth survives and the lies are exposed. I just want to assure you that uh, everything is under control. There's been no damage except for some temporary malfunction of the radio. Come be a part of this awakening by joining us in chat or by calling our hotline at 702-425-9230. That's 702-425-9230. Worldwide callers, find us on Skype at KCOR Radio. We're pushing the ultimate frontier here. Control must be maintained. More disinformation exposed and the truth discovered. Vegas, baby! Vegas is number one source for talk and new music. How cool is that? Going live in three, two, one. Welcome back to Navigating the Truth, the one show that peels back the masks of the elite and exposes the truth we're not being told. You must not abuse the power you've been given. Eventually, you will lose control of that power and the whole world will suffer. Come partake in the... Madeline Rudy from Life in the Hologram. Welcome back, Madeline. Yeah, and we're going to have Carol on our show on Tuesday. That's right. On Halloween. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been looking at things like, so I won't, I won't um, give you any spoilers, but I've been looking at things like, like a simmering pot, like the like ingredients like that make your house smell really good, but like there's yeah. a practical purpose to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm kind of writing things out that um that I'll share on Tuesday. But yeah, what were we? Where were we? Like the mess of the world. The messy every generation. <laughs> Just like yeah. you know, it's like what the like what the heck? You know? What the heck? I just want to get my dad. We slip shoes some on. kind of strange timelines. <laughs> I don't like it, Madeline. I, I really I'm not enjoying this one little bit. I want to put my dancing shoes on, you know? Yeah. I want to dance. I want to dance down the street. I want to paint the buildings bright colours. I want to plant um fruit trees like i have all these great ideas man you know (laughs) we could change this in the wink of an eye yeah we could we really could why don't we (laughs) you know i don't know why it's not happening like i i i stay all my like affirmations like uh i sit and i do my vision like i go back to the, the what i believe is home you know, like I, I'll mm-hmm. repeatedly, repeatedly do it. Like I get all my little directions before I fall asleep at night. And then I get up in the morning and I'm still here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, huh. <laughs> yeah, because, it's amazing, you know, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's like, huh. Because like when you, well, you know, like we're looking at an illusion and we're aware that it's an illusion an illusion and we're aware that all these things that are unfolding are just plans that have been in the works 
forever. You know, everything seems to be set up nicely in order for, um, what is it, this one world order, whatever their agenda is, 2030. You know, there's a bunch out there that we can take our pick for. And there is, there is true evil here. There is true evil here. I have sensed it. I have felt it. And what you described um, during the break there, that's what that sounds like to me is going on with your best friend. Mm-hmm. Like the and here's where I'm at, and I don't know, like so, like being like kind of spiritually minded, you're always looking for the balance, you know. You're always mm-hmm. looking for um, don't want to really get any heavy judgment, you know. Or, but I'm at that point now, Madeline, where no, there is no balance with this evil. This needs to go. Yeah. It really just needs to go, like once and for all. And I really do think there are enough light workers here that can can handle oh, absolutely people. yeah i do and i think that's it we just have to know what it is and it is real it is here uh, this shit when it be oh, excuse me i'm so sorry for swearing <laughs> <laughs> you know you can tell that like i'm like a sailor like normally <laughs> like they just like slip out here and there no i do apologize well the but, strange thing is caroline we're these spiritual people are being attacked on certain fronts. I mean, if you look at Mm -hmm. Facebook even, and you see all the people, oh, this one had a heart attack. Oh, this one had a whatever. You know, they seem to be dropping like flies. And if they're not dropping with some type of sickness or illness or something, they're just dropping dead. I know. It's the same here. Like, it's the same in this country. Like, um, I, I've actually made the decision uh, that I'm not attending another funeral. And it's no to be disrespectful. I'll send flowers. I'll send a mm-hmm. card. I am not going into another graveyard. Mm-hmm. No, nope, not doing it. Even if it's like the, what do they call it? The sanatorium the where they have the... Viewing or whatever. Yeah, like for the crematorium. Like it's a crematorium. That's the word I'm looking for. And then they'll have like a memorial garden. Like and it's mm-hmm. just the people's ashes. I am not going near any of these places and it's no because <laughs> I'm just I, I'm no buying into this whole like this is this is like slaughter you know nobody dies in natural causes anymore you know like there is no and that is how we should be if we are dying it should be of natural causes well and the strange part is some of you you see some of these people are living to 100 102 104 mm-hmm. 105 mm-hmm. but we should live to that age and still be in good shape yeah we shouldn't be having this arthritis cataracts you know right God, you know like no that's your that's our environment that's that is a direct result for the environment and it's the same with addictions heroin addictions like Mm -hmm. any kind of addiction you can connect it to their environment you know like it's 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 just obvious and now what have we got what do what do they want is like 1984 like we're all going to be like living in a it'll not be your house it'll be like your your prison you know i'm not up for this at all well i was thinking about this you know people you have these little houses or a house or whatever you know you might even have a big palatial house mm-hmm. but what's uh, what divides you from inside the house and outside the house what is it eight inches the wall right could yeah. be 12 maybe 12 mm-hmm. so and what is that it's either uh wood drywall concrete maybe, stone yeah uh, well you're if it's concrete and stone you're lucky mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm concrete we're all concrete and stone here in yeah. scotland well, we don't have wood <laughs> no 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 we're not over here no no i know but you know what is that to save you from anything? No, no, if they can disintegrate stone, yeah. you know, metal, you know, they can, it can melt metal and it wasn't airplane fuel. Mm. Well, even look at Acapulco, what just happened there with their Cat 5 hurricane. What, what happened? What, it, like almost destroyed the whole of Acapulco. Wow. Was that recent? Yeah, I never seen that. Yeah, the other day. Wow. I didn't get that news. Yeah. Acapulco. I always liked that name. Mm-hmm. In Mexico. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, dear. Yeah. Some of the high rises are still standing, but they look a little wobbly. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and you know, when they build things on these coastlines, you would think by now that they would really want to make them sturdy, knowing that these 
you know, they have these weather events, you know, pretty often now. Yeah, I've been saying that forever. You know, like when Katrina happened and the story kind of came out that they knew that they had to um, reinforce the levees. Oh, yeah. And they never done it. You know, they put it off year after year after year. See, like, I- I'm right there with you. Like, if you're on a coastal area that might be prone to flooding maybe every 50 years or 25 Mm -hmm. years, then you take precautions, you know, like, why are we not doing that? You know, why have we not been doing that? We haven't. We've been taking the cheaper and cheaper route every time. Well, even here, look at the United States. We should have a different infrastructure here. Mm -hmm. They haven't upgraded hardly anything look at the railway system that should have been upgraded where we could take one train and it'd take us across the united states yeah. in a hurry you know yeah not 25 days I, I don't think it takes 25 days but it could take a good 10 <laughs> yeah it could well yeah country's big but yeah i agree but, uh, with you yeah i, agree I mean with you. they don't mm-hmm. even have good tra- nope. like in europe we don't have good trains here why did they have really slick trains over in japan and china yeah they do beautiful layouts mm-hmm. yeah yeah I, I sometimes i'll look at those videos with the um, train lines in China and Japan, they are like... Yeah, streamlined. Really, like, state-of-the-art. Same with the bridges. Like, uh, you know, I, I think I've talked to you in the past, like, about, like, it was the coal works and then the steel works here, and then it was just a matter of time we were importing steel because we weren't producing our own. The just go a uh, uh, um, news for Calmac. Now, there was a big scandal here because they were building boats. We need more boats because we have a lot of islanders. And the Scottish government had um, had set aside money for a boat to be built, and it was called the Sanox. And um, it was it happened. It didn't happen in Glasgow, but it happened just outside Glasgow. The there was one mere shipbuilding, only one left. And what happened was the boat ended up costing. We could have had five boats by the time the cost it went up into like 56 mil. It was just ridiculous. But here's the thing: the boat isn't hasn't been constructed using proper steel. So we're back oh to square God. one. Yeah, we're back to square one again. Yep. They, they they don't even know how to build them anymore. You would think it's, that they would have engineers that know how to do this stuff. It's not being passed in, Madeline. Like, this is what's happening. They have somehow, they have not been training them. They've not, it's, they wanted to go and work um, in software or computers or, or be a, a football player or a movie star. The, and what happened is they started shortchanging in the training. They would only ch- train them in like maybe mm. three basic things. Instead of the whole of the engineering, it would just, they would just know how to do three things or they would know how to do these three things. And everything again was becoming cop what is it you call it a compartmentalized one does they know what the other one's doing don't know how to do the other thing it's it's very deliberate like when you step back and you look at it it's um this is no accidental this is um this is prior knowledge of something that is going to occur here and that is why your buildings are like they get thrown up they're mm-hmm. no, they're no meant to last. You know, everything, nothing is meant to last. The infrastructure hasn't been taken care of because they know. It's, no, and the electrical grid yeah. system over here in the United States. Yep. Good golly, Miss Molly. I know. I know. I get the feeling it's it's all going to get. It. They already have the technology to upgrade all this stuff really quickly, but the people are not There's still too many is or something. You know, <laughs> there's something. Still no quite right with the whole picture for the puzzle just to fall into place. That's just my 10 cents. And I, I've been wrong before. I can be wrong again. Yeah. It's, it's well, like you said, they're not teaching. People aren't learning. The they're not tra- teaching well, them. No, well, they're not teaching they them. They don't want to work. Yeah. But I don't think it's everybody. Like, I think this labeling is, um that was something that I experienced when I came back here to this country. I went into a job. And everybody else in the job didn't speak English. It was only me. And they pretty much told me that they were here doing these jobs because Scottish people were too lazy to do them. Mm. And I looked at them and I was like, I'm Scottish. I'm doing this work. 
and their response to me was, yeah, but you you were in America. I always mm. had a good work ethic. Like, that, I think that's how I was able to always find work. Like, I've always been a hard worker. And oh, yeah, daughter, when you need you money, know, you, you got to go. You yeah. take the job that available till you can find something different. Better, yeah. That's always been. And that was always the way that I looked at things. Like, I was always going to move up. I wasn't going to stay in the same mm-hmm. position. And, I, like, so I don't know. Yeah, there is a percentage of the population that is not interested in hard work. That's for well, sure. Well, look, I, I, they had... We're talking about this when the Gutfeld show and they were saying that they were paying you five hundred dollars a day for poop. And what? I'm like, what? <laughs> I know I, I read all this stuff. <laughs> what? Let me look this up. Yep. And yep. lo and behold, they were. Yeah. Yeah. So people are paying people to because I guess people had, you know, these uh intestinal operations and such mm-hmm. and they, they need the bacteria. To yep. They mm-hmm. yeah, they need to repopulate their geome and their tummy and mm-hmm. they were paying five hundred dollars a day. Now Ooh. the one group <laughs> Was I mean, you could even have little kids up until uh 26 years old. Wow. They paid if you were accepted, it's $500 a day, you could make $180,000 a year. Yep, yep. I thought, why the hell didn't they have that when I was 26? <laughs> right? Well, here in this country, they send like um, they send it through the mail, the mail, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like I don't know how they do it. Like it's every few years or something, you'll get it through the re- the mail, and it's the NHS, and they they want a sample of your poo. And the oh, first that's time, to see if you have a colon issue, right? But I don't yeah. think that's the only thing. Probably not. No, that's not Probably the only thing. Not. I told them they would have to pay me if they want my poo. So well, just... somebody's going to. But now it's. Yep. <laughs> uh, then I found another site where it was like uh, eight, eighteen, or whatever to fifty. Oh wow! Who knew this was going on? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, who really knew? This is a good part time job. <laughs> it's a good part time job. Yep. <laughs> yep. I mean, if you can get the work. <laughs> oh, you're hysterical, Madeline. Yeah. You know, this is like, I think I even brought this up like the first show that I did. Like, don't give them your freaking poo unless they're paying you for it. <laughs> you know, they're stealing it. <laughs> Well, no, in this country, they're stealing it. I already gave it for, uh, they want to do colonoscopies on people, and it's like, yeah, no, I'll do this other thing where I can send them a sample. That's okay. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some people need a colonoscopy. But Of course, of course. Like, I'm no poo-hooing the, um, poo-hooing, haha. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> like the medical profession, no, it, there are, um, there is miraculous things going on. Are you kidding? It's just the other stuff that's criminal, you know, mm-hmm. that is tainting everything. It's really, it, because it's evil. It, it's not life enhancing at all. Well, even they were talking about women with uh, those things where they smash your food. Oh, a mammogram. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) they they say that's the worst thing a woman could do. And half of them aren't even right. Right. Because I said, they have me. I said, no. I said, if you can let me go to get that, uh, it's called a mammography or something Uh like that, where it's like uh, infrared light that they shine in or whatever they do, that it comes up and it it shows you the pictures. And so I said, no, I'm not. Oh, like the uh, sonogram. Yeah, they can do it. Whatever. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing a forget Mm -hmm. about it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Like, but now they're saying it's not good for the women. No, like you square it's a round boob that they're squeezing into a square space. No, and your your boobs can are very tender. You know, yeah. This is not a, no, no, no. I mean, I it's 2023. We're not in the stone ages anymore. They, they have technology for this stuff that they don't have to do this kind of crazy stuff. They could have changed the shape for one thing. They could have made it more accommodating for women. I'm pretty sure they could have. You know, mm-hmm. you look at these oh, machines. When, see, when I look at these machines, half of these machines look like they're 80 years old. You mm-hmm. know, they don't look new at all. 
Yeah, and let's get, uh, well, you know, these med beds. I had a laugh when I was watching the Stargate movie yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the guy, I forget what the guy's name was. But anyway, uh, the one guy got shot. So he took him and they put him in this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I likened it to like a med bed Mm -hmm. because the guy was dead and they brought him back to life. And then Mm -hmm. this, the guy from this other planet who his planet was destroyed and he made, uh, you know, the humans minions. And he says, well, that's why I like this, because you were so easy to repair. Yeah, yeah. So I liken that to the med beds. So mm-hmm. once you get in one of those med beds, supposedly, it can turn everything around in your health. Well, we keep hearing about them, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We keep hearing about <clears throat> them. It's like a carrot that just gets dangled. You know, we keep hearing about the med beds. We keep hearing about the RV, the mm-hmm. transfer of money and da, 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 da. Now, Sarah, guess Sarah, when's it going to happen? Come on. They keep saying, oh, at the end of the month. And I know. What, month? what year? <laughs> and then there's, a, like, there's always something, something, some reason. Uh-huh. Yep. I think I'm waiting 40 years or 45 years for this Nas Sarah, guess Sarah. Yeah. Well, for me, like. I was just waiting for people to, I don't know what I was waiting for. I, <laughs> <laughs> like, I wasn't having great in-depth conversations with many people. Like, it, it pretty much, like, I knew that how I felt about things. There wasn't a lot of agreement around me. So, you, mm-hmm. you kind of, you keep things to yourself. Mm-hmm. But I, I remember, like, it, it was, like, decade after decade after decade. Mm-hmm. Like, just, just what? Like, when is it going to flip? You know, when is it? And and even even with the different health things, I see a lot of people on TikTok and hear this Barbara O'Neill. She's a new one on the on the alternative health front. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about castor oil packs, I think, like 30 years ago. Yeah. Right. With Edgar Casey, and then I think maybe even 15 years ago we were talking about the oil pulling. You know where you use That's the coconut right. oil. Coconut. And, yep, all the And oil now and this coconut. is all the rage. But yep. I really didn't know all the wonderful things that castor oil can do. So mm-hmm. castor oil is my new best friend. <laughs> yeah, and you turned me on it the other day. There, see, I forget things too. I completely forget, like, remedies that I Mm -hmm. have known about, like, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And then it's like somebody will say something and it sparks it again. And I remember, oh, and look at that. Coming up on a little break again. Like, I can just talk, can't I? (laughs) (laughs) I'm so happy you joined me. I have the lovely Madeline Rudy with me today. And we're coming up on a longer break. It's the six-minute break. So grab your tea, your coffee, your water, your juice. And we will be back in six minutes. You've been listening to Navigating the Truth, a show that will inspire you to transform the world around you, including your health. For more information on the show, Navigating the Truth, Navigating the Truth, and the host, Caroline Bell Tumblety, as well as services she offers, please visit her website at soulim.org. That's S O U L I A M dot org. It's as simple as that. Navigating the Truth. Incoming message. Uh, hello? I can't, I can't hear you, but you can hear me, right? We interrupt to bring you this. We've hijacked your daily dose of regurgitated news to bring you Navigating the Truth. Brace yourself, listeners, as you're about to enter a world where the narrative is no longer masqueraded as the truth. A world where the conspiracies of yesterday's translate into the truths of today. Are you listening? The veils covering the truth are lifting and understandings once suppressed are finally being revealed. Will you be ready? And now, your host and navigator through these circles of lies, the host of Navigating the Truth, Caroline Bell Tumblety. Hi, welcome back to Navigating the Truth on Sunday afternoon. It is the 29th of October. It is the last Sunday in October. I hope everybody is having a pleasant day. The sun has gone down here. It is now raining and it is dark. But you know what? Last night, 
I did a little um I did a meditation like for the um, full moon and I was doing like some chanting and when I was finished I had made my cup of tea sat down on the couch and the moon was right across the street and took a picture of it and it was like here in this country it was just um you could just see the eclipse at the bottom of the moon but it was it was very clear in the sky um and it was it felt it felt good like I'm still kind of feeling through the energy of the moon. The the moons have been intense lately, and it's not really been uh, for me anyway. It hasn't felt very good. The last eclipse that um what was it Ring of Fire, that one I didn't even want to leave the house for a couple of days. That the the energies just didn't feel good. But this one, this one, so far so good. So like I don't want to jinx it. So so far so good. This was the full moon, and yeah, and we have. Madeline Rudy with us today from Life in the Hologram. Madeline, let the listeners know um, who you have on on Tuesday. You, you and me. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, dearie me. <laughs> that's right. Like last night we were laughing about that because everybody was having um, somebody for Casey Ware on their on their show this week. Like I think David has a uh, Leo Bonomo on his show Leo uh, Bonomo, tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And then and I that- have in November Art Geyser, Andy Decodes, Joshua Wolak, and Jack wow. Carey. Wow. So it's gonna You've be quite a- the lineup. Yeah. yeah. You know, I located um I located a friend of mine that did the the T V show. That I did in Woodstock. It was my friend Raquel. We did that like way back in the nineties. She actually had moved back to Holland, and we just uh, we just picked up connection again. She's actually involved in women's ceremonies, like a uh, rite of passage. Like she's in, she's heavily involved. Like I guess she's an elder now, so mm. she's going to come on, and we're going to talk about um our Woodstock days and. Because that's what we did. We used to interview people. Like we did it on like a cable TV. Ah. And yeah, we would talk about dreams and books and like pretty much like yeah, we did that. And um we also did a lot of other training together. We did the um Oklahoma. It was it you've did fireworks, right? Did you do fireworks, Madeline? Was it you? Uh they wanted me to. It's like, no, I don't really need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was still like at that age where I, it was like I wanted to kind of challenge myself. Like I, I think I was like 31, 32 and I did it. But well, yeah, I might have been a little older, but it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, oh, come on. Man. Oh, no. no. I, I don't have to burn my feet for anybody. Forget about it. I that was like <laughs> when I went, went to Thailand, too. They had this shaman healer. Mm-hmm. Well, I watched her blow some cigar smoke in people's faces and then she batted them over the head with palms and took a, a elephant tusk the ivory you know ivory thing and did it across their back and they said oh come on i said oh absolutely not yeah. <laughs> it's like no 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 i need a gentler healing than that i don't need anybody blowing cigar smoke in my face and taking no. an elephant no. across my back till I bleed no <laughs> sometimes no. you just have to set your foot down <laughs> yeah quite right I think I just did it for the spectacle you know when I think back on it like, well I guess it's empowering for some mm-hmm. people yeah you know what I mean sure yeah I didn't need to be empowered that bad <laughs> good for you <laughs> You go, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you're a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, no, uh-uh. <laughs> did you, like, I did the obstacle courses, like the army obstacle courses. I did all that. Like, <laughs> I was climbing, like, telephone poles and jumping off oh them on God. trapeze swings. <laughs> yeah, I was, <laughs> I was throwing my body at the ground. And <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, no. I, was, I did. And th- that they were all... Like um, the idea behind that was um, that you build like team, like trusting other members of your team and all that. Like it was all like this. Um, didn't matter what the world threw at you, you could handle it. Because look at you, you climbed the telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh I my know. god i know here, here i'll give you one how about when they say uh i've given your your son's getting the last rights you don't know if he's he's going to make it through the night is that like climbing a telephone pole <laughs> whoa no 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 you know, when you've been through things like that, that yeah, you can set all the telephone poles in front of me as you want. But yeah, yeah, no, 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 I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> no, life can um can definitely hit us yeah. with some blows without um. But I think it was more like I just wanted to see if I could do it. You know? I oh yeah. All about that, and would I do it again? No. <laughs> No, but yeah, I mean, I've had like, as you say, like, um, given the last rites, like, mm-hmm. there's nothing more sobering, is there, than um, the reality of your loved ones, yeah, being taken for you, yeah. No, and you know, when they talk about that walking on fire and all that stuff, listen, when you walk in the room and you watch them do the paddles, boom, oh, your mother to bring her back yeah. to life. <laughs> Yeah, is that that's like fire walking walk. on fire? <laughs> that's like being in the fire. Yep. Yep. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. But you like you actually like when I'm reading when I read off your bio, like it seems to me like you you were seeking, you know, like you you were all over. I think I was always seeking, even as a mm-hmm. child. <clears throat> yeah. Because uh, like, I mean, I've said this many times, I, even like as a child, it's like, this can't be all that there is. I can't believe that. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that, you know, you grow up, you go to school, maybe you go to college, you get married, you retire, and that's it. Well, I know. If, if so that's empty. it, yep. and somebody put a bullet in my head and end it now, because it's like, this can't be all there is. No. I, and I mean, that was a lifelong thing. I mean, even like I said, even as a kid. So what should answer? Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> there is more, but it's not here. <laughs> Oh, Madeline, if I could get out of here, I'd be gone. I know. You know, I would. And no, I don't want, I, you know, I still have days where um, I have a lot of joy, you know, mm-hmm. like the, there's still a lot of joy. But the way the, um, the powers that be, whatever you want to call them, are behaving, they're stealing the joy. You know, they're stealing everything. It's like we could, the progress, you know, that could be getting made. We don't need to make people into slaves or dumb, you know, right. like. Well, I, we can you believe, I mean, if we believe in God or a higher power, how mm-hmm. can whatever be watching what's going on and just sitting there saying, oh, well, we'll let them do what they want to do. It's their free will. You know, that's how I had a hard time. Like, and if they destroy yeah. themselves and they destroy the oh, planet, well. well, oh well. No, I'm not buying that anymore. <laughs> I'm just like I've always like I believe that as a source creator, I don't think anybody's ever seen the source creator. They can say that they have. Like I don't think. Um, I don't think they're anywhere near this realm. But the I always had a hard time. Like we, the concept of God. You know, like. There was too many of them for them just to be one. You know, it like, it didn't make any sense. I tried all the different religions when I was a child. I was yeah, going. I think, into, <laughs> I, think yeah. I went to pretty many of them too. Yeah, I was going into the Mormons and getting the free bread and wine. And <laughs> 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 I was seeing the rounds. You know, I was like everywhere. And I don't think I did the Mormons, but I, I did. did. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> there was one group. The Baha'i, it was called the Baha'i group. And I was went there when I lived in Georgia. And then they had, you know, the uh, the Buddha and Catholic, of course. I think we all were indoctrinated with Catholicism, weren't we? God, yeah, yeah. And so many of them. And they all have the basics of whatever. And then the Holy Rollers, spiritual church. Uh, so that was all interesting. You know, I even did like um, some of the Scientology. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, I looked into that. I looked into um, born agains, like born again mm-hmm. Christians. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. And Jehovah. Looked into them all. I did. No, they, Look- the Jehovah's didn't suck me in. <laughs> they never sucked me in. Like I but, was you know, some checking them, them out. They really, <laughs> they really help people. They you do. know, they'll, they'll yep. go in and 
and help actually help you. Yeah, they do. Like if yep. you're sick, they'll come and they'll take care of you and feed you. Yeah, when I lived up in the Catskills, there was a woman that I knew, and she had she had like some hard times financially. They were leaving money in her car, like for her and her children. So they were like they were they they can I think they kind of take care of their own little congregations. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the times, but I couldn't, I couldn't in all honesty believe it. You know, I just couldn't believe what they wanted me to believe. You know, it was just, to me, there was too many contradictions, too many, like the Jesus up on the cross bleeding, like, um, mm-hmm. that is a horrendous sight for children. I remember being like, oh my God, what kind of place is this? You know, this is, this is their savior and this is what they did to him. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do to me? <laughs> but, yeah, really? <laughs> Am I safe here? <laughs> you know? And you know what like it's been for women. I mean, it, like, this planet has never, ever, ever given women the place. Ever. Well, and now they don't even know what a woman is. I know. I know. I, like, they changed it, right? And uh, I don't know what it was. And, you know, I don't care. I know who I am. You know who you are. <laughs> we yeah. know who we are, you know. And I can, I'll go eat, like, if somebody, like, I'm confident enough that I think I can hold my horn in an argument if somebody, like, said to me, what is a woman? Like, I could tell them. It's me. It's mm-hmm. who I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's who I am. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I never I don't thought know it would how, be like this. Uh, how, so. Yeah, how did we get so confused? <laughs> yeah. And, like, when we were talking through the break, like, yeah, there are tons and tons of podcasters out there, like radio um, shows, like um, YouTube channels. It hasn't made it clearer, though. Like, the picture didn't get clearer. It got really, really cloudy. You know, like, there's a mm-hmm. couple of voices that are... But it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm kind of tired of rabbit holes, Summer. Yeah, there's so, there's so much information now. I mean... Before, we didn't have that much information, but now there's so much information to figure out. Is this the truth? Is that mm-hmm. the truth? Da, 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 da. You know, and even like the conspiracy theories with JFK Jr. and yep. Princess mm-hmm. Di. I never thought Princess Di was dead. Did you not? No. Well, no. How so? How so? What What made you feel like I never that? thought... Well, because she was the, the guy she was dating, Dodie Fayed, he was a movie producer. Mm-hmm. So you can make anything look like a car crash if you're a movie producer, can't you? Of oh, course, cool. yeah, yeah. Cinematography, and like I don't special know, did effects. They, did mm-hmm. anybody ever see her dead body? I don't know. I don't know. I never thought she was dead. I just thought that she, because <clears throat> if she didn't, you know, like stage her death, mm-hmm. The queen would have taken yeah. her out. Well, see, that was what because he was a Muslim. Heard. That's exactly what I heard that she was pregnant, and that was why she was taking it. Well, but that was just another thing that was just circulating. You know, like I, I never I, thought she was name. dead. Never. That's interesting. That's interesting. You're not alone. Like there are other people that believe that as well that have thought that. But then again, like she would never have had peace. You know, this might have been the only way that she could actually Absolutely. just have a life. You know? Absolutely. And, you know, well, look, they, they claim that Biden's wearing one of these masks, mm-hmm. that it's not really Biden under there. He's supposedly been dead for a few years. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and, you know, it's just they can they can just make people that you think that they're the person and they're really not the person. Right. And with the type of money these people have, they can go and they can get plastic surgery, whatever, mm-hmm. and they can be walking around in plain sight and you'd never know it. I think you're right. I think you're right. Do you remember that movie, Face Off, I think it was called? Mm-mm, and it mm-mm. was John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. And that, that was, they were changing faces. Like, I don't even know where that movie came out. But yeah, I think you're right. I think they can do this. Like, I think that that this is all possible, highly possible. Yeah, when you're uh, yeah. when you're in the realm that you are like a movie producer, then you have access to all of these different things. Yeah, and the his family. And when you got money, you can do anything. Exactly. Yeah, you can. 
Yep. <clears throat> I mean, you know, when you got big money, you can make anything look real or unreal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's okay. my take on it. Yep. Well, that just ties right in a like how we can't even trust the images that we're being shown now Mm -mm. like for other parts of the world because that is where we're at like we are at i mean back in the day we all knew that um certain like prime ministers uh, presidents movie stars would have doubles like that was a that was a given like that was their big secret like i remember um being really aware that they used doubles Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden that kind of got quiet and they never stopped using them they got better at them Mm -hmm. now they they can actually replace they can actually take out a leader replace them with their own puppet that just looks exactly the same like that's Mm -hmm. what we're being told can happen i mean i don't think it can happen i think it is happening is happening yeah. yeah and that would make better sense like the um because the the leaders and this country hate the people. <laughs> you know, they cannot stand the people and they mm-hmm. don't hide it. You know, they're not even at the, they, they don't even try and hide it. Well, and even some of your movie stars and rock stars and whatever, you know, they get so harassed, mm-hmm. you know, during their popularity times that some of them just want to fade away. Mm-hmm. And but, yeah, but have you noticed how some of them don't get harassed? Yeah, there's some that's harassed all the time and some really don't get harassed. Yeah, it's interesting, says. Because yeah. is it that they they know how to deal with security better than the other ones? Like or is it something else? You I know? think it's probably something, something else. Something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's probably something else. <laughs> it's probably something else. Yeah. There's always oh. something else going on. <laughs> what a dark world, you know? Like I uh, have a bit some light here, you know? Well there are. There there no to say that there's not there is. There's wonderful people here. Like yourself, Madeline. We've got Tina. Like I would say all the hosts on KCOR are like beacons right now for um you know, I mean some some of you just need to hear another voice. Mm-hmm. And hear it in a different way. You yeah. know, maybe they've been hearing it one way and then we tell it in a different manner and then it, a light bulb might go off in somebody's head and say yeah that makes a little sense mm-hmm. why didn't i see it that way mm-hmm. and even with people with you know the ufo uh experience and such mm-hmm. uh some people don't even think they think that we're the only people here in the whole universe i know <laughs> that's 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 really pushing it <laughs> Well, it's a no, like, there's also people here that believe that this is only 10,000 years old. And yeah. Yeah, that the dinosaurs weren't real. Well, you better wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Godzilla's coming. <laughs> we were talking about that last night. They'll probably be marching out of that hole in the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that was another thing i seen. Like, sometimes I see these really kind of, like, um, disturbing. Somebody had posted something about giant spiders or something that were up in the Arctic. Or, but I don't know about that. I don't know. S- supposedly they found them in the ice, thawed them out. Like, you know, it's the whole, like, Jurassic Park thing again. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know? like, do not, do not try and clone that, <laughs> you know? They like, probably already did. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, uh, yeah, they did. I don't know, like, the bugs I've been seeing to you, there's something different with the bugs. So there is. And look at that, coming up on a break. And this is the final break. Um, and I thank the listeners. We will be back in three with Madeline Rudy. You're listening to Navigating the Truth with Caroline Bell Templeton where the truth survives and the lies are exposed. I just want to assure you that uh, everything is under control. There's been no damage except for some temporary malfunction of the radio. Come be a part of this awakening by pushing the ultimate frontier here. Control must be maintained. More disinformation exposed and the truth discovered after a word from our sponsors. Going live in three, two, one. Welcome back to Navigating the Truth, the one show that peels back the masks of the elite and exposes the truth we're not being told. Here to warn you. You must not.
not abuse the power you've been given. Eventually, you will lose control of that power and the whole world will suffer. Come partake in The Awakening, examining the narratives and uncovering the truth with your host of Navigating the Truth, Caroline Bell Tumblety. Caroline Bell Tumblety. Hi, welcome back to Navigating the Truth, and I am Caroline Bell Tumblety. I'm your host, and I want to thank the listeners. Thank you very much for listening in. I have a fantastic guest with me today. I have Madeline Rudy, and I want to thank Tina Marie for um for doing everything that she does. It makes it all smooth. Uh, thank you so much. That's our CEO, producer, and owner of KCR Radio. And just to let the listeners know, um. Stay tuned after Navigating the Truth. We have Cosmic Connections with Merlin the Wizard, who is also Madeline's co-host on Navigating... No, she's in Life in the Hologram. (laughs) Somewhere. She's in the hologram. (laughs) Got lost. (laughs) Cosmic Connection with Merlin the Wizard and Caroline Lynch. And welcome back, Madeline. Can you believe how fast this has went? We're on the last segment. Well, you know, Caroline Lynch... Mm-hmm. Our birthdays are the same birthday. Really? Yep. That's so cool. <laughs> you know, we get all these little, like, um, little same night things, you know? Like, I noticed that, like, um, birth dates, you know, I don't know anybody that has the same birth date as me, and then I meet somebody, and it's like, I like all that. So I do, like, I don't think these things are random. Yeah, it's it's strange that Merlin mm-hmm. would have. Yeah, and you, I would have yeah. Merlin as a mm-hmm. co-host, and he would have the same uh, girl who has the same birth date as I do. Hmm. Different years, but the same date. I wonder, like, well, he's an astrologist, so he's mm-hmm. probably, like, go all the, like, he'll know, like, who he's going to get on with, who's going to be, like, um. but, I mean, the chances of finding two people with the same date of, <laughs> yeah uh, slim yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool it's very cool and then you're, you're with them in like a different capacity yeah yeah i like how you open your show you always read your card mm. i like that yeah i was just going through my cards today <clears throat> i got a lot of cards <laughs> Yeah. A lot of cards. They're good though. I like though. I like I have my tarot cards. I have my medicine cards. I have a bunch of different ones as well. You got a lot of cards. I had gotten this new one called it's the glyphs. Did Ooh. you ever hear of the glyphs? Mm-mm. Well, Sherry introduced me to these glyphs. Well, this lady made a card uh pack too to go with they're like different kinds of pictures that she drew that she you know i guess got from spirit and then these glyphs they're supposed to help heal you Mm -hmm. they're called sacred symbols of a light oh i like that gene logan and then they have all different kinds of glyphs to resolve nerve damage well isn't that funny how i just opened that page (laughs) yeah Hmm. no accident there so you put up these glyphs or, you know, and then it says like suggested affirmation. I am love in motion. I am a clear, I am clear of all afflictions and stand tall without fear or regret. I am the light. And that comes with these different glyphs. And, and of course they have, you know, like a little class and such that goes with these for mm-hmm. your glyphs. And a lot of people are having you know, great success with these glyphs. Hmm. Yeah. Are they, like, is it different pictures? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's little pictures that she was, uh, you know, guided to to do. Like, here, clear vision. And it's like a little, looks like a squiggly cloud, and then there's an eye in it. Ah, okay. And then it has, you know, the suggested affirmation. Mm -hmm. Creator, help me to clear my vision so that I may understand and see my mission. Give me the clarity and the wisdom to follow the divine plan. Open my eyes that I may see with love and understanding. Let me see only the good in others so that they will see the good in me. That's actually lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's all different kinds of, you know, like uh, thymus regeneration, restore your thyroid, nerve damage, etheric implants, malignant growths, 
So wow. there's, you know, there's all kinds of uh, things to do to promote a healing. And then you have to find the magic bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to what works for you. Mm-hmm. Well, like, uh, for me, like, I, I also did the Reiki. I've done, like, the energy work. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm, and I don't know if you have noticed this, the way that I used to tune in doesn't work anymore. I've had to actually, like, mentally use my mind to find where I can tune in. And the best way I can describe it, I used to tune in, like, going straight up. Like, I, like energetically, that was how it felt to me. Would mm-hmm. I would go straight up and then I would be, like, connected in. That hasn't been, I haven't been able to do that. Or I was, like, I would say for the last three years, it was less and less I was able to connect in. And it was giving me the feeling of being disconnected, the, like, spirit. But I noticed in the last few months that um, it's not in the same position anymore. It's like, like I don't want to say it out loud, but it's it's in a different place in my mind space now. And that's what I have to do. I have to actually um, consciously move my energy so that I'm not using the same track that I was using mm-hmm. in the past. I've had to find a new way of connecting in. And that seems to be working for me. So far, so good. And, you know, is it grounding into the earth? Is that still no. a good idea? No, I don't feel it is, but that's just me. I have, right. I had such a, I had a wild experience a couple of years ago and I have a whole different take on the the earth now. And I was big into grounding into the earth, but no, I take my heart and it's out there. It goes out where I, what I feel is I tune in to like my, my true self, my higher self, and that's where my heart energy goes. That's where I ground in. I don't ground anywhere here. I can't. It's it, it won't sustain me. It won't mm-hmm. keep me alive. It will kill me. Like that's how I feel about it. The energy's not. It's no life enhancing for me anyway. It, it was dra- draining me. I used to have. You know, you would go into the. Uh, crystal Mm -hmm. in the center of the earth but Mm -hmm. i don't know is the crystal what do you think i don't know i don't know (laughs) well you're questioning it you know like Mm -hmm. whereas like i mean i never used to question question um like grounding into the earth i never used to question that like and it was something that made me question it and i when i so i think if you're questioning that madeline look look at it you know, like it could be a case of you haven't a ground into something else now, something new. I don't mm. know. You know, I don't know. Like that seems to be working for me. So it does. And yeah. I, I, I was like, a, I was really, I was like a dolphin on the beach there flapping around. Like I just, I just felt like the life was being sucked right out of me. Like as long as I would keep connect, connecting into the same stuff, it was draining me. But I don't yeah. feel that way now. I feel like I'm I'm not losing now. I feel like I'm winning now. Like, at least I'm stable, you know? Yeah, because I think, uh, you know, as far as healing goes, a lot of us don't stay in our body. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're not in your body, maybe that's my issue. I don't stay in my body. And if I'm not in my body, then how can I heal <laughs> the little inner intricate syncrasies that are off in my body (laughs) Hmm. do you like do you feel like you're you're leaving like do you feel like your your energy shifts and you're not quite in your body yeah i i believe it i don't i believe i don't stay there Mm -hmm. you know some mornings when i walk with my daughter and she'll talk to me and apparently i'm answering her you know (laughs) (laughs) you know i'll go "Uh uh uh-huh uh-huh and then and then i hear her because the tone changes and she'll say to me did you hear me did did you actually hear what i say and i'll look at her and i have to think where the heck was i you know Mm -hmm. like i'm walking with her but i'm not really there you know I'm off somewhere in my head or I'm thinking about something. I have to really, like, that was what was happening to me. I was less and less here. And now I have to really, I have to focus. I have to focus. Like, I have, and I can't do it all the time. It's exhausting. Yeah, I was driving to the market yesterday and I missed my turn. I thought, wait a minute. 
dog walked down the road. It's like, wow. you were supposed to turn back there. And it, it was a small window of time because at this market at like 3.30, they reduce all their vegetables at the vegetable stand. So the vegetables that they were selling for three, four dollars, they put down to a dollar or dollar fifty. Mm-hmm. So you have to get there, you know, right at the time. And I'm like, oh, okay, everything's gonna work out, Madeline. So I turned back and I went, you know, the way I was supposed to go. And then I got to the market. And it's like, wow, all different people were coming out of the market of all different kind, all different kinds of people from all over the world. And I'm mm. like, hmm, this doesn't look like our farmer's market, but okay. Yeah. Wow. A lot of Chinese people. Hmm. Do you have, um, are they visiting? Are they just, or are they moving there? I I guess they're moving here. I saw a lot of Chinese people, a lot of Spanish people. Uh, that was mostly, you know, not too many people from Berks County. They were all like from different places. Wow. But I wonder, yeah, I wonder I, what the criteria is. Like, I don't. Them. I don't know. Well, they go over there at that time, like I said, because they Mm -hmm. reduce everything. Right. Like I wasn't paying attention and they had all the baked goods reduced 25%. Wow. And then you could buy one soft pretzel. You got one free. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a cool market. (laughs) And then I got my vegetables. But and then the, at the meat, you know, the lunch meat stand, then mm-hmm. they put down, they reduce them 20%. So because a lot of these things are very expensive today. I mean, lunch meat is very expensive. Like if you got roast beef, it's almost $10 a pound. Holy crap. Yep. Yeah. I know. So 20% off of that, it like, puts it in perspective. Yeah. That'd get you up for eight, wouldn't it? 20%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything is so expensive. Like, it, there was a little lull there for maybe about a month. It seemed that things weren't, like, here anyway. Because every week they were going up a pound, 50 pence. Like, they were jumping. Now it's starting again. They're starting to mm-hmm. jump up again. It's starting to jump up. They're making noises about the energy costs are going to go up again. They just came down. Only for them to go back up again. Of course, we're in winter, so that's when they can make the most out of us. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's a shame because mm-hmm. you know the food that we used to get. Well, even look at vegetables. Vegetables weren't always as as expensive as they are now. And if you're a person that's juicing, it could cost you a small fortune. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well. Yeah. Well. I. I don't know what you say, Madeline. You know, I just don't know what to say. We have to I just, have a plot of land and start growing our own. But well, I don't think I could have a cow and raise a cow and then have to kill it. <laughs> no, you get a goat. You get a goat because then you can get your milk, you can get your cheese, you can even make your butter. And the goat will keep the grass trimmed as well. Mm-hmm. And you don't need to kill the goat. Goats make great pets. And you get your chickens, a couple of ducks. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, near we, I think, I don't know, like here I would need, I would need a greenhouse, at least for partially yeah. the rear, you know, mm-hmm. but I could do it. I could definitely do it. You know, well, this- I wasn't too successful with my garden this year. I got two cucumbers. What's better than none? And three tomatoes. Well, it certainly wouldn't sustain you for the <laughs> winter months. <laughs> It's a start, Madeline. It's a start. Three tomatoes and two cucumbers are better than none. Yeah. Well, that's true. Right? And we planted we planted a watermelon plant. I'll tell you what, it, I, it grew and it grew and it grew, but never got a flower. Oh, no never watermelon. Got a watermelon. No watermelon. They take up a lot of room when I you're growing. I yeah. Would make, uh, I wouldn't be sustaining myself <laughs> what about um sprouts do you ever do any sprouts like in like the the big no, jars what them <laughs> yeah yeah they i mean a couple of days you've got something to eat you know i have two avocado plants growing but i didn't get Ooh. an avocado yet and i planted lemons i didn't get a lemon tree yet it's not to say that you won't <laughs> <laughs> do you always keep your seeds like i love some of the stuff that you actually post like it'll be the waste the food 
like the ends of the carrots and the mm-hmm. potatoes and they replant them. Mm-hmm. Like that, all that, that stuff's useful information for people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can do it. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You know, my mom, like, always, like, if she had an orange, she would always dry out the seed and then she would st- stick it in one of her wee plant pots on the windowsill. You know the amount of orange trees my mother grew? But they Did never you? hit. They never produced oranges. It's yeah. too cold. It's too cold here for them. But I, the leaves are fragrant. I planted something, but and it, the whatever it is is growing nicely. But I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mystery crop. <laughs> I wonder what it is. I don't know. Take a, gonna, picture. take a picture. Take a picture. I'm going to have to download that plant That's identification to go out and take a picture of yeah. it. <laughs> I plan all this stuff and then I forget what it is. <laughs> Do you have why like, would I put a why would I put a note on it so I would know what it is? Uh you probably thought you would remember. That's usually what I do now now remember that. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks later what was that again <laughs> oh, oh my god i was you know like i have a um a cat now living here and at halloween i have this gold skull that i like to bring out and i put like the purple lights around it and um he kept on bringing it he kept knocking it down and pulling the lights off and pulling the lights off so i ended up I picked it up and I thought I put it in a drawer. And the other day I was decorating like for the Halloween for the kids. And um, I'm looking for the skull, searching the whole house for the skull. And I'm like, I'm sure I put it in that drawer. I went through every drawer and then I'm looking at my daughter going, do you know what I did with that? (laughs) Do do you know where that is? And then it it came to me. I put it in my wardrobe. Yeah, you put it in a safe place. (laughs) That's what I do. It was the last place I looked <laughs> to find it. I put uh-huh. them in safe places and then I can't find them. And then I have to, I text my friend Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> She's co-hosted several times with me. And I'd say, do you know where I put this? <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> oh, wow. Did you ever used to call yourself? I used to call myself like at home and leave myself a message to remember things. No. I used to do that. <laughs> when I lived in America, yeah, like I'd be so freaking busy, I'd need to leave myself a message. So then you decided to leave and go back? No, 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 no. Like, no, I, that was not a decision that was made um, in a clear mind. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't well. think, feel I had a choice. I, I, I was, I basically had been with somebody for two years and he committed suicide. Ah. And it, I couldn't get my head around it, Madeline. I just, like, it completely the, knocked the wind right out of me. Mm. So it did. And I, I couldn't even formulate a sentence. There I could. For about six months, I couldn't even speak. It was, nothing was making sense. It was coming out of my mouth. No, mm. that was, that was, <laughs> that was a doozy. So it was. And yeah. I was in denial about a lot of stuff that I actually had to face. I actually had to face it head on. And that's what I've done. And now I'm in this country and um, my daughter, thank God my daughter's with me. Hi, thank you for listening to Navigating the Truth. I'm sorry that the it kind of cut out at the end. Like for some reason I didn't have the, the volume. So I apologize, but thank you for listening and I'll be back next week. Take care. Bye-bye.